The Upper Peninsula wolf hunt is now just days away. Recent reports have raised some questions regarding the need for the hunt. It's a complicated matter and we're going to be addressing it over the next three evenings here on ABC 10 News Now. We begin tonight though in Wolf Management Unit B where ABC 10's Rick Tarsitano talked with one couple at the heart of the issue, living amongst the packs. Hey, you want me to throw the ball? Nancy Warren has a deep appreciation for wolves. I just find the wolf very fascinating. The more I learn about them, the more I want to learn about them. I found that they live in the pack and they have a very um, strong pack social dynamic, very similar to the human family. They have the adults, uh, yearlings, and pups of the year. And every member is dependent on the other for survival. She depends on a pack of her own, comprised of her husband Al and their German shepherd Liebchen. My wife and I were canoeing the south branch of the Ontonagon River. Uh, we were spending the night on the river, and while we were setting up camp, we heard a lone wolf howl. That was the first wolf I'd ever heard live, <laughs> other than TV. And um, it was quite a thrill for both of us, and that's what started my interest. And it's just grown from then. It's just an interest that just never stops growing. Almost 10 years ago, the alpha male and female of the Ewan pack that shares their property were collared. We had telemetry equipment and we'd track these wolves. So we, we sometimes we'd get a, a response from the telemetry equipment right off our back porch. But they're pretty elusive animals. You, can, you know they're there, you can hear them, you can find their tracks and sign, but uh, it, when you see one, it's, it's, it's a rare event. Probably over the last 15 years, I might have seen a dozen, not here. Uh, a matter of fact, I've only seen the one wolf live on our property. Wolves have the propensity to form 100 square mile territories. Wolves are an animal that go jogging 10 to 12 hours a day every day of their life. They are constantly on the movement. They put down a lot of footprints. They, they make it appear to the layperson there's a lot more wolves than there are just because there's not a lot of wildlife that does that. If I had to put money on it, I'd say it's right. Nancy would bet wolf. <laughs> the Warrens spent 17 years as volunteer wolf trackers for the Wisconsin DNR. So they know what they're looking for. You could see the bone fragments in there too. Each year I would go out into the woods and look for sign and help the DNR um, calculate how many animals were in. We were each um, assigned a specific block and we would uh, look for tracks and designate whether or not there was breeding activity in that pack. And this is how DNR determined the population. Michigan DNR employ professionals that use a similar process in conjunction with aerial scans and telemetry readings. The current count pegs them at 658, a far cry from a mere 20 in 1992. All we do is open up the camera. Nancy and Al monitor the UN PAC's activity through two trail cams on their 281 acre patch of land. They even go on wolf howls to scan for nearby packs. No answer today, but there has been plenty of activity in Unit B. From the beginning of 2010 through July of 2013, 78 of the 131 wolf livestock depredations have taken place here. So I really honed in on what are the problems in Wolf Unit B that couldn't be handled through the non-lethal and lethal tools. And when I found out, or what I've gotten, are the records that show the majority of all the livestock depredations in this unit um, we're at one farm just about 10 miles west of here. We'll head to that farm in our next installment and try to find out why so many cattle are turning up dead. For ABC 10 and CW5, I'm Rick Tarsitano.